After experimenting with locale recipes for years, if I still had one guilty pleasure, it would be Taco Bell. More specifically, the Crunchwrap Supreme. So today, we are going to make a Crunchwrap Supreme that is so close to the original, you won't be able to tell the difference. Besides, it's a little bit better. I don't really have a problem with the amount of calories in the Crunchwrap. It's the fact that there's only 16 grams of protein in the whole thing for 530 calories. I'm going to show you that you could fit crunch wraps into your diet that tastes legitimately like Taco Bell. Even after I've had a couple people try them, they've said, wow, this tastes exactly like Taco Bell, but better. So we're not gonna waste any more time. We're going to get right into it. Anabolic crunch wrap, anabolic sauce. God, I'm just so excited. It's time to eat. Let's get into it. We're gonna start out by making the anabolic sauce. What sauce is that? Well cilantro lime sauce and really i got this idea straight from sam the cooking guy shout out to sam the cooking guy it's great to look at other creators and see how they do things and when i was watching his california burrito recipe he showed himself making essentially this sauce but i'm going to just change it up a tad bit to make it a little bit more anabolic and just give it a little different of a taste however the macros are great the calories are low and it's a great sauce to put on if you want to make your standard Standard crunch wrap go to a luxury crunch wrap within five minutes and most of the ingredients you have already all this stuff looks like a lot but I guarantee you most of the people that are already watching this have the seasonings and hot sauce and Greek yogurt you guys will have most of this stuff you probably will have to pick up two or three things but it is well worth it we're gonna start with our scale with our Greek yogurt and we're gonna weigh out a cup which is 224 grams of Greek yogurt in his version, he used sour cream. Greek yogurt tastes exactly like sour cream. If you ask me and if you ask most people, I've made recipes where people have tried it and had no idea that it was Greek yogurt. And then I'm going to add a little bit of mayo to add some more creaminess to it. If this sounds gross at first, I kind of understand. But once everything's mixed together, the cilantro is so strong, the garlic that we're about to put in is so strong, you're not gonna know the difference that sour cream is in it, Greek yogurt's in it, mayonnaise is in it. It's just gonna taste incredible. You can use garlic powder here, but I'm going to use fresh garlic and we're gonna mince it and press it right in here. There's nothing like some fresh garlic and that's what I'm gonna use. You can use a full teaspoon of garlic powder if you'd like or two fat cloves of garlic. You could use your hot sauce of choice. I think he used Cholula. I'm using Valentina, just a little splash or two. Some pepper, some salt. I'm gonna add a fair amount of salt. Never hurts. And we're gonna zest the lime. So I don't have like a long zester. I'm just gonna use my grater and I'm gonna go around the whole lime, both the sides and the top. Now, so this is gonna stick on the inside. You wanna get all of it. Just scrape it down right into the cup. Some spills on the sides, bring it up, put it right in there. The zest does make a difference. So add the zest. Now we're actually gonna use the juice in the lime here. And if you don't have a lime press or whatever this is called, you can just squeeze it. But since I have a lime press, I'm gonna use it. So I'm gonna cut this bad boy in half. Lime press, you face it down. And all you gotta do is push, just like the garlic here. Other hyph. Beautiful. We're about there. We just have to cut up this cilantro just a little bit. Now I only want to use about 45 to 50 grams here of cilantro. I don't want to have it too overly cilantro. I'd rather have it a little bit more limey and tangy. Essentially, all you have to do, cut it at the stem where the leaves start, and I'm just going to cut it about four times because I'm going to let the ninja do all the work for me. All right, so that batch was pretty on point here. Now you probably should have done it the other way. So the wet ingredients are on the bottom when you start mixing, but it works either way. Now you can cut up cilantro you don't have to blend it up. You just have to cut the cilantro up real thin. Since I have it, I'm going to use it and it makes it even thinner, more saucy, I guess. I don't know, but it is better if you do have it, but it tastes great regardless. So the great thing about the Ninja, it comes with these accessories that you can legitimately use this as a mini blender. I never use it as a shake or whatever because my protein ice creams are pitcher sized, but it works perfect for making an anabolic sauce. Okay, bye. <laughs> Definitely use the cilantro and everything on the bottom. If you want it to go faster, it really only took an extra like 30 seconds, but I did have to like push 
all the wet ingredients down. And the reason I'm doing this right now is because I wanna be able to put this in the fridge while everything is cooking and it'll thicken up a little bit. Now, when I went to the dollar store, they didn't have the clear things. They have these at Walmart, the clear ones. But regardless, if I blow this in my nose a little bit, I'm gonna be able to tell it's goddamn cilantro. I'm gonna put this in here with a funnel. And so literally all I have to do pour it in here. Now it is a little thick, so it's gonna take a minute for it to drop down, but you should have about eight servings in here. So you can make eight crunch wraps and each one's about 30 calories, three grams of protein, three grams of carbs, and I think two grams of fat. Can't beat it though. I mean, how many, even fat-free ranch or whatever is 25 calories. So this is right on par with it. Oh, and it lasts in the fridge for about up to two weeks, I think. I would make sure, I've only had mine for a week and it's still good, but yeah. Two weeks. Our sauce is cooling. Time to make our seasoning for the ground beef. As I said, we are meal prepping this, so we are going to make four servings right out the gate, and this is enough to cook a pound of ground beef. I don't know the exact grams. I will have them by the time that I post this video, but I will post all the stuff in the description so you have everything you need to make this. We're gonna start with chili powder, and then garlic powder, and then onion powder, and then red pepper flakes, which this is also a quarter teaspoon. Another quarter teaspoon of oregano, half a teaspoon of paprika, one and a half teaspoons of cumin. And just so you know, I included the calories for all of this stuff. Most of it's like a one calorie, but I'm just trying to be as transparent as possible and give you guys a complete list of calories if I can. Now we got one teaspoon of pepper, and one teaspoon of kosher salt or sea salt or whatever, like thicker salt. And you should have most of this stuff at your house. If you don't, you're probably missing like one thing. So I'm just gonna mix it up thoroughly and we are going to start cooking this ground beef here. I've cooked this about four times now and I've always been trying to do stuff while the ground beef is cooking. And the ground beef is so thin and such little chunks that you don't want to try to do something else because three of the four times I've cooked this, I've made the ground beef too dry. Funny enough, the crunch up was still delicious, but the meat gets dry really fast because it's so small. So I'm gonna get everything else out of the way first and then we're gonna cook our ground beef last. We're gonna cut up a tomato, your tomato of choice. I like Roma tomatoes. I'm gonna dice these up just as if you were getting them in the crunch wrap. You could do this how you want as far as the meal prep goes. You can cut a tomato every day so you have fresh tomato, or you can cut four days worth of tomato. That fourth day is gonna be kind of iffy. I'm just gonna cut up a full tomato. This is probably about two, maybe three crunch wraps worth. We're gonna take our head of lettuce and cut up some lettuce as well. Once again, I would not cut up four days worth of lettuce. You can, it'll work. By the fourth day, it's gonna be kind of brown and like, not loose, but like flimsy. So I would just cut it day by day. You're gonna use two dishes, not a big deal. And a head of lettuce costs like, I don't know, a dollar. There's no special way here, I'm no chef. I'm just a guy trying to eat good food. So I'm just cutting this up in random ass chunks. Now I'm not gonna do this again because I already have a good amount shredded up, but what I just used to zest the lemon, I would also cut up the cheese on if I was out of cheese. I would rather buy the brick because the stuff they have that's shredded has like this powder and film on it and it's just not the same. I'd rather shred a fresh block of cheese. This is sharp cheddar, reduced fat, so it's 90 calories per serving. We're only using half an ounce, so this will literally make Make you 16 crunch wraps. I would rather use the real thing and use half an ounce than use the fat free and use a full ounce because this has so much more flavor in it. Now, before I even start my flame for the ground beef, I'm gonna break this up. Some people just put it right in. I'm not gonna put it right in. I used to do it with the spoon all the time and I would much rather just do it myself and go little piece by piece and wash my hands afterward because that little spoon annoys the living hell out of me because it takes forever to break it up. Why not just do it like this and then put the flame on and then get going. Oh, and before I do that, I'm glad this is sitting right here. I'm gonna give literally one, two, three, four. So a little bit longer than a second, probably 15 calories maybe and spray that down. And I'm gonna do the same thing to the top and once again, that's all included in the calories that I'm gonna give you at the end of the video. Now, just like Remington did, I'm using 96.4 beef. That's the best way to go. You can get 99.1 turkey, but it's too, you need to have some fat. There's too little fat in it. So what I would do typically, like I did in my Sloppy Joe recipe, is I mixed a 93.7 and 99.1 turkey if you are dead set on using turkey. I think ground beef tastes better, but I would go with 96.4 fat, 
instead of 99.1 because there's just no flavor. Like fat gives it flavor. That extra 3% makes a big difference. That's legitimately four times as much fat. Now I'm gonna give the top of this, same thing. One, two, three, four. And I'm gonna add my seasoning on the top here. So I would much rather go low and slow than try to go too quick and overcook the meat. So I'm gonna put on like what would be like a two or three out of 10. Not like the lowest, lowest setting, but damn near it. And constantly stir because you want all the meat to turn brown at the same time. If you have some that are brown and some that are pink, then you're gonna overcook the ones that are already brown. So just keep an eye on it. That's why I said, try to get everything prepared and ready. Now, while we're waiting anyway, let's go over the tortillas. When I was at the store, I was stoked to find these flour tortillas. You wanna know why? Because on the back here, it says one tortilla, 190 calories. And these ones are humongous. Like this would cover the whole tostada. So I get home and I'm like, you know, I definitely have to weigh these out just like bread is this supposed to be 71 grams for 190 calories this was 113 grams so is it like actually 300 calories in each tortilla point being always weigh your food because you think you're consuming something even when literally it says one tortilla 190 calories when actually you got an extra hundred let's mix this up a little bit here moving on to the tortillas that we're going to use mission carb balance i saw some people putting these in the comment section of remington's video too and i was kind of surprised that he didn't use them because i've been using these for years they are great there's literally 110 calories in a full tortilla and we can't cover the whole tostada still but i'll show you what we're gonna do to get over that in a little bit once this ground beef is done. In this tortilla, there's 110 calories, six grams of fat, 30 carbs with 25 from fiber. With nine grams of protein, this is a real anabolic tortilla. And then our tostadas. We're starting to get there. The more pink meat, I'm moving towards the middle here because that's where the flame is at. And anything that looks almost done, I'm moving towards the outside because it's still getting heat. It's just not cooking nearly as fast as the stuff in the middle. Now that the meat is done, I'm gonna give it a little whirl here, get everything nice and wet. And then I'm going to put it on this plate here and clean this pan so we could use it for the tortillas. All we wanna do is get this tortilla warm so it's nice and pliable. So I'm gonna keep that there for about 20, 30 seconds and then I'm gonna flip it. Now in preparation here, I am making a little circle to put in the middle on the back here. It's gonna add about, I think it was like 20 calories, but you're gonna enclose this so the lettuce isn't just gonna fall right out and you're gonna have a full crunch wrap like you would really get from Taco Bell. With this recipe, I'm trying to get this literally as close to the real Taco Bell recipe as possible. So uh, this is probably 20, 25 calories. I already counted it in there and we're gonna use this to close it and then I'm gonna make another one very similar to that. So this is nice and pliable. What we're gonna do first is put our cheese on here. This way we can easily spread the cheese right on the tortilla. So we'll zero this out. And I'm doing three tablespoons, which is about 45 grams here. So once this says minus 45, we are good to go. Now I did this with two tablespoons and it works, but the more cheese, the better for me. I love cheese, so I'll spend the extra 20 calories to have more nacho cheese on top. This is just regular ass Fritos, mild cheddar nacho cheese, 40 calories for two tablespoons. That's really nothing. And we're already under 500 calories for this recipe. Doesn't matter to me. I'm gonna spread this around about the same size of the tostada. And if you really wanna get a good judgment, you could legitimately like put it right on top and be like, okay, yeah, I spread it out enough. That's pretty much how far you want it, as big as the tostada, so you can close this properly. Good, we're about there. Now we're gonna do the same thing with the ground beef. We put this on top of here. And if you didn't know, some of you may, some of you might not, when you cook four ounces of meat, it usually, not every single type of meat, it usually cooks down to about 84 grams for a four ounce serving raw. So I'm gonna get this to say minus 84. That shit is hot. Minus 84.1, that's beautiful. And we have ground beef, taco meat, whatever you wanna call it, in every bite. All right, this is where I put my shredded cheese on. So it's gonna melt right on top of the ground beef. I zero this out again and I put a half ounce on here. Now, if you want, you can not add that extra tablespoon of nacho cheese and not put this shredded cheese on and you would make up about 60 calories, which would almost make it very close to 400 calories overall. But once again, it's worth it to me. I love cheese. I want the full flavor. We put our tostada on top. Now, the first one I'm gonna do is with quote unquote sour cream. So I'm gonna get the Greek yogurt here and I'm gonna put 42 grams of the Greek yogurt on top. And what's good about 
about this, it's just like the tortilla, you can spread it right out. And we're gonna go until it says minus 42, cause that's an ounce and a half. Minus 41, close enough, let's eat. Now we're gonna spread this around. You can do it however you want. Maybe I'm not even doing it the best way possible. Get it as evenly as you can. My whole thing with Taco Bell that gets me mad is when they make it and you don't have everything in every bite. So that was definitely my goal here. Shredded cheese, ground beef, nacho cheese, tomatoes, everything should be in every single bite. My BFF doesn't like tomatoes. I'm not gonna put tomatoes on, just lettuce. We're covering about the whole thing. And now we put our extra little piece of tortilla on here and we start folding. Fold, 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 fold and fold and see this is beautiful it's closed we don't have to worry about it we put it down on its head so this side hardens up first and so this goes a little bit faster i'm going to turn up the heat just a little bit but you got to keep your eye on it because i also burnt the tortillas by turning it up and forgetting about it for literally like two minutes now it doesn't have to have too much brownness to it before you flip it but it's nice and crispy and now we want to get the top side crispy and i already got my cilantro sauce out. There's gonna be little chunks of cilantro that are a little bit bigger than this little tiny hole for the ketchup, what was supposed to be ketchup bottle here. So I'm gonna cut off just the tip. You'll have a nice even flow. It'll come right out and you're gonna feel like you're on the line at Taco Bell because you could go like spray, 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 long sprays, zigzag, however you wanna do it. It's up to you. But first I have to heat up that tortilla. Our first one is done. Look how beautiful, perfectly brown, both sides. Wait for the crunch, I'm gonna be extra silent. You heard it first. I present to you a authentic, non-authentic Mexican Taco Bell crunch wrap to a T, nacho cheese, sour cream, cause like I said, Greek yogurt tastes the exact same. No tomato. I added a little bit of shredded cheese, but a little more cheese never hurt anybody. This is beautiful. A little squeeze, look at that cheese. It's ready to just pop right the f out. Let's make my crunch wrap. Same process, this has to heat up a little bit, but now that this is hotter, this is gonna heat up quicker. So I'm only gonna give it like 15, 20 seconds on each side. If it starts crisping up, when you try to fold it, it's not gonna fold, it's just gonna break. And I want a nice, beautiful crunch wrap for this thumbnail. So you know I'm gonna get it right. 15 seconds, already really nice and pliable. I don't even know how much longer this needs. This is pretty goddamn hot. Same thing, literally same thing. Nacho cheese ground beef, shredded cheese on top. And feel free to play, maybe you want more shredded cheese and less nacho cheese, feel free to play around with it. Tostada, anabolic, cilantro lime sauce. What's nice about this is you really don't have to spread it around because this does all the work for you. Got my little zigzag, ooh, let's zigzag back and forth this way. <laughs> Kill them. All right, that's good. So I'm gonna have my tomatoes down so they stick nice and good. So we got tomatoes in every bite. Let's get our lettuce on here. Now we're gonna put our extra piece on and we're gonna fold, fold, keep on folding. Don't stop. Oh, this might barely make it. This one's gonna be a little bit open, but at least I made my best friends perfectly. Lay this right on top. That's it. We're gonna wait. We'll be back for the closing remarks and the macros. First rule of thumb, you have to add some sort of Taco Bell sauce. My preferred is fire. I also have Diablo, but you must put something. If you don't have any extra packets at the house, like my crazy ass does, you could also buy the fire sauce at the store. I think it's like 250 or three bucks and you got a whole bottle. Well worth it, but you gotta add the fire sauce. Is this hands and what? Hands and knees? Hands and, I don't even know the saying. Head and shoulders above? Is this? hands, knees, and shoulders above a Taco Bell crunch wrap? No, I'm not gonna sit here and lie to you. Is it better? Yes. Is it like, oh my God, it's so much better? I wouldn't say yes, unless you really like the cilantro lime sauce because that is a game changer. But my best friend doesn't like the cilantro lime sauce, so it's more like sour cream that we just put on hers. And it tastes so similar to a Taco Bell crunch wrap, just a little bit better. The macros on the cilantro lime crunch wrap goes as follows. 480 calories, 24 fat, 49 carb, 46 protein. Or for the regular crunch wrap, you're saving about nine calories, 471 calories, 23 fat, 49 carb, 46 protein. So you're getting about 30 grams more protein in each one. You can choose to have a regular crunch wrap or you can upgrade and get the cilantro lime if you do like that type of sauce. And it is so fresh tasting and so good that you will absolutely love it. I guarantee if you like crunch wraps you will love these you will have now in about it took me about 45 minutes with recording and everything which would normally take me about half an hour to meal prep 
four meals. If you have a pan ready, all you gotta do is throw the tortilla on, get your ingredients cut up, and while the ground beef is reheating, cut your vegetables up, get that tortilla warm, put your nacho cheese on, and get everything on and you're ready to go. Huge shout out to Sam the Cooking Guy for helping me in making this sauce and helping me think of making this sauce. I hope you guys are eating well. We are four or five recipes in at this point and I have had nothing but good feedback. Get a crunch wrap, get a protein ice cream. I don't care if it's your mint Oreo, I don't care if it's your cinnamon toast crunch, but go and eat something good. I guarantee you will like these ice creams. And until next time, I will see you in that next one. Do. See.